Okay, so welcome to this next video uh, in which we are discussing the citric acid cycle. Okay, so we've just discussed what is sometimes called the link reaction, which is this reaction which takes pyruvate, uh, which is in the intermembrane space, and turns it into acetyl coenzyme A, uh, which is then on the uh, matrix side of the uh, inner membrane of the mitochondria. Okay, and in that process, it generates a molecule of reduced NAD and also CO2. Right, so we now want to see what are we going to do with acetyl-CoA molecules, which are within the matrix of the mitochondria. Well, they are going to enter what is known as the citric acid cycle. Now, the starting point for the citric acid cycle is a molecule known as oxaloacetate. Okay, and this is going to combine with the acetyl coenzyme A. And basically, the reason the citric acid cycle forms a cycle is that we start off with oxaloacetate, which will join with acetyl coenzyme A. Okay, and at the end of the entire thing, we will generate oxaloacetate back again. So we lose the acetyl-CoA, that's what we're feeding in, that's what's going to be broken down, but in the process, we will regenerate the oxaloacetate, basically. Okay, and that's why it's going to be called a cycle. Okay, so, this is the structure of an oxaloacetate molecule. It is a four-carbon molecule where you have carboxylic acid groups at either end, and then you have this carbonyl group of this second carbon here. Okay, so this is called oxaloacetate. Okay, and what's going to happen is oxaloacetate is going to combine with acetyl coenzyme A. Okay, and the way this is going to happen is what you can imagine doing is basically imagine, is this in the, yes, that's excellent. Imagine breaking one of the bonds. Uh, between this carbon atom and this oxygen atom. Okay, so there is a double bond between this carbon atom and this oxygen atom here. Imagine breaking one of those two bonds and then send one electron back to the carbon and the other back to the oxygen. Okay, so don't break both bonds, just break one of the bonds. And that means this carbon has a free electron. Now take the acetyl-CoA molecule, okay, and break the bond between this carbon atom and this hydrogen atom here, okay, uh, like so. And again, imagine sending one electron back to this carbon and one back to the hydrogen. Then imagine linking this carbon onto this carbon. So let me now show this. So we'll start off by drawing this carbon over here because this isn't going to be affected at all, okay. We'll then have this carbon here, so this is this methylene group. Now, what is changing is this third carbon here. So it now has an oxygen that is single bound to it and also has a free electron. We also have this carboxylic acid group that's going to remain there and it's going to sit up here like so. Okay, and now what I'm going to say we're going to do is I'm going to take this carbon which is here. It has a free electron and I'm going to bind it to the free electron of this carbon here so that what I end up with is this methylene group here and this carboxylic acid group. Now, it was bound to a coenzyme A molecule, so I'm going to break that off. So I'm going to bring in water, basically. Now, if I bring in water, water is H2O, so it's oxygen with two single bonds to two hydrogen atoms. Imagine breaking one of the bonds in the water molecule, okay, and send one electron back to the oxygen atom, one back to the hydrogen atom and then also break this bond between the sulfur atom and the carbon atom. Again, send one electron back to the carbon, one back to the sulfur. Stick this alcohol group here onto this carbon atom because the oxygen has a free electron and the carbon has a free electron to recreate the carboxylic acid group. And then stick this hydrogen onto the sulfur atom to regenerate coenzyme A molecules. Okay. Now, the one final thing to sort out is this oxygen atom down here, which has a free electron, and then the hydrogen atom that came off up here, which has a free electron. Bind them together to put an alcohol group there. And finally, you have now done the reaction. Okay, so, uh, you bring in acetyl coenzyme A. Okay, you bring in oxaloacetate. You bring in water. You get out 
uh, this molecule here, which is citric acid, okay, or citrate, because of course, if you have the conjugate base of this, it will be citrate. Okay, now this is the origin of the naming for this cycle being called the citric acid cycle, but it's also the origin of it being called the tricarboxylic acid cycle. And the reason is we have got one, two, three carbon, uh, sorry, carboxylic acid groups on this molecule. So this molecule is effectively a tricarboxylic acid, and that's why it's also called the tricarboxylic acid cycle, because this molecule has three carboxylic acid groups. And of course, you also generate a coenzyme A molecule in this reaction. Okay, so what is this reaction catalyzed by? Well, it's catalyzed by an enzyme known as citrate synthase. So the enzyme which catalyzes the addition of the acetyl coenzyme A molecule onto the oxaloacetate molecule is citrate synthase. Okay, right. Uh, now, um, so we've got this citric acid molecule. We now want to see what will happen to the citric acid molecule. Basically, it's going to be acted upon by an enzyme known as aconitase. Okay, so the next step in the process is it's going to be acted upon by an enzyme known as aconitase. And this next step is going to be reversible, so it can go both ways. So, aconitase is going to act on it next. And sometimes, in some textbooks, they will omit this step uh, to simplify the process as much as possible. But really, we should put this here because it is there. Okay, so what's going to happen is a conotase is going to remove water from this molecule. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to take water out. So what you can imagine doing is breaking this bond and breaking this bond here. Okay, so imagine sending one electron back to the carbon, one back to the oxygen, one back to the carbon, one back to the hydrogen, and sticking this hydrogen onto this oxygen to generate water then bind this carbon's free electron to this carbon's free electron. What will you then get? Okay, well, you'll now have a double bond right in the center of this molecule. So here is a double bond. You'll then have a hydrogen off here. Here's the carboxylic acid group that's still over here, like so. Then here's the carboxylic acid group that comes off up here, like so. And then off this third carbon here in the middle, you've still got, well actually no you haven't, that's gone, you've got rid of that alcohol group, but you have still got the methylene group here, like so, and then on the end of that, another carboxylic acid group. Okay, so, the name for this molecule that I have now drawn here is what's known as cis-aconitate. Okay, so this is called cis-aconitate. Now, the cis just refers to uh, the optical isomerism, or the stereo isomerism, or the cis-trans EZ isomerism. Um, I shouldn't call it optical isomerism. It's not called optical isomerism. It's, called a, it's a form of stereo isomerism, which includes both EZ isomerism and optical isomerism. Okay, but uh, it's not an optical isomerism problem here. Okay, it's an EZ isomerism problem. Right, so aconitase basically has removed water from the citric acid molecule and has produced cis-aconitate. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to instantly add the water molecule back on. So aconitase is going to work on this molecule again. It's going to take the water and it's going to bring it back in. Okay, but the way it's going to do it is... Um, different from the way it took the water out. So it's going to put an alcohol group back on and put a hydrogen back on, but what it's going to do is it's going to put the alcohol group back onto this carbon here, and then it's going to put the hydrogen onto that carbon there. So let me show this. So basically, this is what most textbooks will abbreviate this process to. They will just show citric acid being turned into the molecule that I'm about to show here, which is called isocitrate. Okay, so the alcohol group is put back onto the second carbon here, and you also have a hydrogen off. Then the third carbon, instead of the alcohol group, which it originally had, gets a hydrogen, basically. And then here is its carboxylic acid group coming off here. And then fourth carbon here will still be the same with this methylene group. And then the fifth carbon will still be a carboxylic acid group over here. 
Okay, so this molecule that we've now got here is known as isocitrate, okay, because it is a structural isomer of um, citric acid or citrate. So this is isocitrate. Now, we'll call it there for this video and we'll continue this discussion where we'll see what's going to happen to isocitrate in the next video.